anxiety is the cure to darkness. Hashtags, a discussion on internet musical phenomenon and digital culture. In this episode, we dive deep into the wild and wonderful culture that is Kauai, with artists, May She Smile, Eddie Laheka, and Ben Aqua, as well as Vivian Host, Adam Harper, LLLL, and Moon Mask. But what is Kauai, you ask? Let's log on. Kauai is naive, Kauai is cute, Kauai is beautiful. It's its own little world. An adjective in Japanese meaning pretty, cute, lovely, charming, dear, darling, pet. Adjective. She paints elephants that are extremely kawaii. Oh boy, that's cute. Tee hee. Tee hee. Well, I think kawaii the culture is about feeling and about uh, belonging to naiveness or imperfection. And kawaii is kind of like this beautiful, euphoric kind of landscape of, um, of happiness. I believe it's very reactionary to having to adhere to the norm of Japanese society. It's like the license that's handed to, to me and a lot of other people to express that kind of colorful, you know, maybe cute side that is not maybe embraced on a mainstream level. We all grew up experiencing that kawaii culture. For Japanese people's minds, it was always uh, the way it had been. I wanted to make cute sounding music. Music that I can like dress up to. It's like a means to express themselves outside of their daily lives. Like people go to the office and they have to, you know, wear a suit or wear dress clothes all day, but then when they get home, it's a way to kind of free themselves and express themselves and be who they want to be. People who are not Japanese tend to fetishize like anime or Japanese TV um, because it's so different than what we're used to hearing. You know, we're thinking they think this is what Japan is like, and I think it's kind of, he thinks it's humorous, and yeah, I think it's so true. Hold on. Let me show you. There's an enormous, cute underground of people who are very interested in Japan, very interested in 8-bit music, uh, very interested in anime, very interested in Nintendo. It's by no, no means just a music thing. And a lot of the growth came from like the, the music game community, like people who were playing games like DDR and Beatmania. They were the ones that kind of latched on to the music originally. One thing to know about all of this is that it is all nerd subculture. But it's only been in the past five years or so that it's really become a, a self-critical talking point and listening point. It's like there are so many different kinds of kawaii that it's almost like anybody can become kawaii nowadays. And then a lot of these guys started taking these different sounds and putting their own twists on it. So I think a lot of people see what Japan is doing in regards to like creating cute characters and creating these very colorful and vibrant experiences. And that's starting to show up in the US as well. In Japan, I mean, it's much more of a part of everyday life. To us, it wasn't any, anything particularly unique about it. It's just a part of our existence, you know? Kawaii has a substantial history and as such is a rich tapestry of adorable cuteness. A whole world, a whole palette of uh, kawaii is a way of dressing, a way of sounding, a way of moving, a way of living, really. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm like this cartoon character 
that has this kind of dark, twisted side to him, maybe, but on the outside presents himself very colorfully and very cute and cuddly as much as I can. <laughs> There's definitely a sense of like trying to maintain a childlike uh, attitude and look. In, in Japanese culture, like people tend to not be so forward about things. So I think that's kind of where this all came from. My feelings for it are so strong, it gets to me. Kawaii culture is a form of escapism. It kind of allows this kind of like almost like gender expression that's like a new form where it's not about being like, oh, you're a female character or a male character that who's also kawaii, but it's more about just being that character. It's almost like The Sims, right? Or some video game where you're creating these alternate lands or alternate spaces online. Is it physical? Is it real? Is it is it fake? Um, does it exist? Does it not exist? And because it's so colorful, because it's so cute, it's very different in some ways from the sense that people have of realism. URL and IRL, I argue, I've argued for a while that they're the same thing. They've always been the same thing. You really have to ask yourself what, what reality is and where you want to live in. There has been a Japanese hardcore scene that's been going on since the 90s. So within Japan, it's just hardcore, like it's hardcore in any other country. Originally, it was a lot of like Rotterdam and uh, like harder style type stuff. A lot of what happens in breakcore is sampling, is this really chopped up scissored up high BPM sampling. A lot of people would just call it J-Core because that's like the umbrella term for all of this kind of underground like DIY music. Again, you don't have to necessarily like it, but um, if it affects you in a way where it challenges you, I think that's how people open their minds. Even though it's not always cute, Japanese hardcore J-Core is often considered a part of kawaii culture. So much of the evolution of Kawaii culture right now happens very underground. Maybe one of the differences between mainstream and underground is that underground stuff is is contradictory and it works against itself. I mean, j Core and this kind of like internet music that we're making is like, you know, considerably smaller compared to like something like, you know, say like EDM. And people have been adapting that into their own things that they can kind of push into Kawaii culture, Japanese culture, because there's a lot of stuff out there too, like uh, Junji Ito is a mangaka in Japan that's very well known for making like dark, disturbing kind of imagery. The one that everybody kind of knows is Baby Metal, but there are other groups out there like Lady Baby, Death Rabbits, and there's like a few other ones that are much smaller that kind of have that same sound where there's this extreme heavy metal, snarling, screaming, in some cases like grindcore kind of sound with these extremely sugary pop vocals laid over top of them and then a couple of cute girls that dress up in like extravagant kind of costumes. It's really very specific online subculture. I think a lot of producers here, I think they're very influenced by the city. I mean, the city is very high paced. You see these seas of people walking out and all these lights and, you know, colors and stuff like that. You know, things are busy. That is definitely influencing the BPM. Super fast, super, you know, just happy and um, every voice is pitched up. What does it mean to look at the world through a child's eyes? Is this really of what, how is this different from reality and why are we, why are we interested in it? It makes me so happy to see that people are uniting over something that cute. <laughs> I love it, I love it. What people are doing is exploring something that they're a little bit intrigued by and maybe even a little bit frightened by, but also kind of seduced by at the same time. And uh, there's a genuine love and interest in this stuff. It's not people being simply sarcastic or fake. It's it's exploring a, a world that is new and it needs to be talked about. Very good question. I'm really excited by the idea of um, of Asian people working with anybody else, and it it, it just being accepted as 
an art form versus it being an Asian art form. I think with more celebrities kind of picking up on it, it'll continue to grow. And I would really love to see it, you know, kind of blossom even more out here because I love seeing bright colors and expressiveness and people just having fun with what they're doing in their daily lives. It's more just about that, that mesh of um, next level thinking that I'm so excited about. If, if the underground got completely swallowed up into, into contemporary mainstream commodity industrial capitalism or whatever you want to call it, there'd be no word for Kauai anymore because it would just be the way things are. Pretty fantastical like cyber world that we live in currently. So, do you get what Hawaii is now? Yo, 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 yo.